Welcome to part three, the most important secret to making a man want you. This section subject is the secrets of attraction. What you have to know before you can successfully and effortlessly attract the quality men into your life. Uh, take a note that this this has much less than you think to do with your looks than it does with who you really are. Yes, your looks do matter, but most women mistakenly believe that looks are everything. As a result, they spend endless time building a wardrobe, putting on makeup, and going to the gym, and they are confused when their relationships never change up a year. Something else you may find relevant. Um, there are plenty of men out there who do value looks as literally the thing that would make them want to commit to a woman. So if you want to rely on looks alone, that's okay. You will get men. However, the men that you do get will tend to be the one, the ones who want a trophy girlfriend. As such, they will be more interested in sex than they are interested in you. Um, the bottom line is, once again, it all boils down to quality. If you want a quality man in a relationship, you've got to be quality yourself. Means, um, which means multifaceted in is in and a Barbie doll is out. Moving right along. So what will flat out help you to attract the man and life of your dreams right into your doorstep? First of all, you've got to take a look at your attitude. Quantum physics, the science of possibility, states that our attitudes and beliefs are what shapes our reality. What's happening inside us what is what determines the, situ uh, the situation outside of us. So if you've got too much airtime to do the inner critic who lives inside your head, or if you're holding yourself back with artificial limiting beliefs about men in love, I am too old to be attractive, I'm just not pretty enough, no one wants to date a single mom, and so on. Then the universe will hear you, and since the universe always speaks your language, that is then the situation that you will create around you. But if you can develop an attitude of gratitude and actually appreciate what you've got, then very quickly you'll begin to experience a, par a paradigm shift, not only inside your heart and mind, but also in your life. That's the great thing about quantum physics. The responsibility is squarely in your lap. Can anyone, can anyone say empowering? Your attitude about yourself will also, manis, uh, will also manifest in your life. For example, if you're acting out in security or low self-image, for example, by doing things that deep down you're not comfortable doing in order to get somebody's attention or affection, for example, getting physical quickly in order to get closer to someone or agreeing to an ex exclusive relationship even when you don't really want to because you're unsure of what other opinions you might have. Then you've got to be, uh, then you've got to be aware that those actions are rooted in fear and insecurity and will inevitably come back to bite you on the butt. Here is the deal. If you have sex before you're, you prefer because you want to get some something, a commitment, some attention, someone to wake up next to, then you are directly raising your chances of ending up with a man who is using you for sex. Why? Because the universe listens to you and reflects your behaviors right back to you. In case you would actually be using yourself as a tool to get something out of someone else. The result is usually that the people that uh, the that the people that this manipulated behavior actually works on are the, the very same people who are comfortable doing what to, uh, what you do using you. Part of being a quality woman and ending up with the uh, with the kind of quality men that you really want and deserve is developing a little self awareness, actually paying someone attention to what's motivating you and what your what your real intentions are. And bringing them into into line with who you are, no falseness, manipulation, or faking it is required or permitted here. Being quality will get you quality, and there's just no short changing yourself in this department. Here are a few solid tips to help you make sure that you're not inherently sliding into false, needy, or accidentally manipulated behavior. Don't be on call for him. Don't drop all your plans for him. Don't sit at home waiting for his text messages or phone call. 
Don't ditch your friends for him. Don't be the one who he calls only when he wants something. Don't accept the date not after 10 p.m. Because by this stage, it's not a date. It's a booty call. Um, don't be fooled by the belief that he will change for you. Don't get led on by that little st string of hope he keeps dangling in front of you. If you want people in your life to respect you and genuinely care for you, then you've got to set the tone. Men and everyone else will only think as well of you as you think of yourself. So stop second-guessing yourself and become your own biggest fan. To get respect, you've got to have it for yourself. By the way, all these things are part of being generally attractive to a man, but they're not the most fundamental thing. I want you to think deeper than what everyone else is telling you. Think deeper than conventional wisdom. What is the single most fundamental thing that a man wants in a sexual partner? Think about it. What's the one thing he has to have? I can tell you straight off that it isn't personality. There are plenty of lovely, funny, and smart single women out there. I can, I can also tell you that it's not looks. Beautiful women get dumped every day. Confidence is closer. But I still know shy, timid girls who are deemed desirable. So what is it? Get ready for the answer because it's gonna, it, it will blow your mind. The most important secret to making men want you is that she's a woman. That's it. Men are attracted to a woman. Plain and simple. A woman is someone who's completely different from him in every way. A woman is someone who has intuition. Is in touch with her emotions. And, and can nurture and support others through life's ups and downs. A woman is someone that a man can trust to teach him how to feel, how to love, and how to live life in its most difficult, in in it, in most fullest capacity. See if you don't have to be, you see you don't have to be a man's best friend to attract him. In fact, forming a friendship with a man in the hopes of getting more than down the track is a plain bad idea. And it rarely works. If a guy is attracted to you, he lets you know about it. And he's not attract. And if he's not attracted to you, then no amount of uh, chumming uh, around and being friends is going to create attraction. Men cult uh, cultivate masculine relationships, friendships to satisfy completely different needs than the ones that they actually cultivate female re relationships for. A man will go to the other men to talk tough, one one up each other, fix stuff, or dep or depending on what kind of guy he is, um, break stuff, tinker around, and generally wallowing ma maleness. That's m maleness, by the way, the kind of masculinity he doesn't want you around to witness. He'll go to a woman when he wants to talk about his hopes and dreams. He'll go to a woman when he wants to feel loved or nurtured. He will go to a woman when he wants to feel supported. He'll go to a woman when he wants the soft touch. A man wants a woman because she's a woman, not because she she's his best friend, not because she's one of the guys able to match him shot for shot or head a soccer ball better than he can, and not because she resembles him in, in his interests, passions, and abilities. Unfortunately, a lot of women mistaken closeness for attraction and try to strike up a relationship by emulating a man in the hopes that a like will create desire. Here is how it usually goes for most women. After attracting a man, they get to know him a little uh, better, come to a set of conclusions based on a semi-knowledge of his personality and of what sort of woman he would most like to hang out with. As a result, they start to make all these little alterations to their personality. She'll suddenly start liking his music. She'll drink beer instead of white wine. She'll carve her 20-minute morning wash and get pretty routine down to five minutes because she's embarrassed about taking care of herself and she'll start spending more time hanging out in sports bars because that's where he likes to hang out why because she thinks wrongly as it turns out that he will like her more than and want her more if she if she more closely resembles him and the male friends he likes to hang out with wrong and before you know, her original personality, which incidentally is what attracted him in the first place, is gone. Replaced by a bizarre replica of the new man in her life. Has this never happened to you? Have you ever been in a situation where a guy 
goes to you when he wants to get drunk and be naughty, but not the girl he wants to talk about love or his dreams. This sort of thing happens when a man doesn't see you as a woman. In your efforts to become one of the boys and get closer to him by emulating him, as opposed to having your own self, your own opinions, and your own life, and you actually become one of the boys to him. That's exactly how he, he, he now sees you as a mate, not as contender to be the woman in his life. Since the feminism boom, since the feminism boom, women have been taught that we can do anything. We can match the boys in any older area we want. The subtext being, and they'll just have to suck it up. Here's the problem. If you're trying to compare, uh, compete with men or prove that women are equal to men, that's going to come across as not only ego, uh, egomanical, but also off, uh, off-puttingly competitive. You can compete with a man, or you can attract him. You can do. You can't do both. Now, that's not to say that women are somehow less than men are, or that we need to take pains to regain in our brilliance in case we put off men, uh, off the men. But it is to say that when you're basing your beliefs and actions in the need to prove something, compete when you can bet that men will sense that about you and be turned off. It's true. And what many women uh, just go too far in the hold were just good as men concept without even realizing it. They end up portraying themselves as ball busters or hard women. And of course, they'll then find it extremely difficult to also be attractive. Why? Uh, does that mean that success is attractive in a woman? Well, not not unless the kind of guy you're settling your cap for is also the kind of guy who has deep-seated security issues about his masculinity. What does it mean is that if you're succeeding at something not out of a genuine desire to succeed, but instead operating out of desire to win over men, and then that is what what's unattractive because it's unfeminine, it's competitive, it's not sexy, and it's just not attractive. So if you want to compete with the guy, fine. But don't expect to have him eating out of the palms of your head as soon as his business hours are over. In the process of trying to make themselves more liberated and gain of all the freedoms that men have, many women have, in the eyes of the guys, essentially become men. They've embraced their masculine competitiveness over their femininity in the belief that this is what's required to get what you want in life. They've managed to squash the very feminine essence that makes them attractive to men. Quick note, when you start comparing yourself with the opposite sex, you are settling yourself for trouble. And by the way, there is no threshold that you cross over that qualities as you the feminine kind of woman that men are attracted to. Discovering and unleashing your femininity is a process. You're going to continue learning more about what it means to be a woman until the day you die. But to speed things up a bit, I'm going to give you three mind-blowing principles right now um, that have the power to completely transform your life. Stay tuned for um, for the tips ahead. Thank you.